talk about Drupal and talk about um, starting a Drupal event. And uh, hopefully saw a group that would meet monthly and kind of talk about Drupal issues and ways to fix them and questions that you have. So without that, off to Jared. Awesome, thank you very much. Uh, yeah, introduction to Drupal. My name is Jared McFarland. Uh, I work at Bookman's. I'm the web developer there. We just <laughs> launched in Drupal. We spent about a year developing the website, so we've got a pretty good base of knowledge in it. I'm going to talk tonight really, really high level, just basic, what is Drupal? Because I get that question more often than any other questions. What is it? So I'm going to talk about that tonight. I'm not going to get into anything technical. Uh, and I'm curious to see how many people are interested uh, in a presentation in starting a users group here in Tucson. Uh, we can meet together, work out problems, develop together, uh, do those sorts of things. So go ahead. So what is Drupal? Uh, Drupal is a CMS, which is a content management system, which is a, it basically it's a way for non-developers, non-programmers to manage content. So you've got a staff of content writers, um, like at Bookman's, we've got event liaisons, community coordinators, we've got a big support staff that's feeding us content, and I don't want to have to go in there and upload all that content all the time and be entering HTML. So a CMS is a system for them, non developers, non-programmers, people who don't know how to you know, write HTML to get the con oh, excuse me, the content on the website. And they use control panels instead of code, which is how they do all that. Uh, so this is a screenshot of our Bookman's control panel that I set up yesterday. Lovely, uh, we've got errors showing up in our status report, which are nice. Um, Drupal, one of the great things about Drupal is that it's open source. And what that means is that anybody I can, you can, you know, someone who has no idea what code is can download the code, the source code to Drupal, and do whatever they want to it. And they can submit it back to the authors of Drupal and say, I think that you guys should implement this change that I wrote. Anybody has that ability. Uh, there are over 800 core contributors right now registered with Drupal, and there are five branch maintainers, and there is one core committer. So even though everybody can commit code to it, it's regulated. It's not just like this big, crazy free-for-all. The guy who wrote Drupal, uh, his name is Dries Baitag, he's Danish, I think. Uh, is that right, Danish? I think so. Scandinavian. Uh, <laughs> Scandinavian. Um, he's the guy who wrote Drupal originally, and he's the one who's in charge of every single commit to back to the code. So your code has to go through his eyes in order to make it into what is considered Drupal code. Uh, so if you take a peek under the hood a little bit, and by the way, if I go too fast, or if you have any questions about anything, Feel free to interrupt me, uh, you know, ask, shout something out, tell me to repeat myself. Uh, starting with the stack that uh, Drupal runs on. <clears throat> a stack, and I don't know, you know, I'll be for non-technical users, the stack is the layers of software that are literally stacked on top of each other, or I guess not literally, but you know, in the way that we diagram and think about them, stacked on top of each other uh, to create a web server that runs the website. So Drupal is opinionated, but it, it will use a lot of different things. Uh, it likes Linux, but it, it will run on BSD, Mac, Windows, Solaris, and plenty of others. Um, it really likes Apache, but it will run on light, uh, HTTP and uh, IIS. It's a fan of MySQL, but it will use Postgres, SQL Server, Oracle. And the whole thing's written in PHP, so without PHP you're kind of sunk. But as you can see, it's your basic LAMP stack, you know, <clears throat> most of the 10 12 $15 servers out there that you can get will run uh, Drupal no problem. It's, it's really, really basic stuff. So uh, the core of Drupal, which is, it's all the files you get when you download Drupal. Um, it's it's a, literally a website in a box. You can install it and run it right away. Uh, and what that includes is a, there's a bunch of shared functions. You can thank Scott, by the way, for the gorgeous little graphic with it. Um, and it, it has all of these extra module type of functionality built on top of it. So there's a bunch of shared functions uh, that control logging, syndication, templating, URL management, user management, session management, content management, localization. All of that is built right in when you download it. So you have, when you download and install Drupal on your website, you literally have a fully functioning, content-driven, social, syndicated web 2.0 website running on your server right there, no effort. Downloaded it, unzipped it on your server, installed it, it's there, you got it. Um, and then you can build on top of that with modules. Modules are um, 
groups of files and pieces of code that you can plug in that sit on top of the core framework of Drupal that extend its functionality. So some examples of that are events, WYSIWYGs, forums, calendars, e-commerce even, image gallery. So you can, without really knowing anything about programming, you can download the core, install it, and have a full Web 2.0 website. You can download all these modules. There's over there's some 600 or something like that, um, core contributed modules that are approved by Drupal. Um, there's even there's thousands that aren't approved. Um, and, you, and you can literally have a website that does anything. It's got image galleries, it's got flash management, it's got e-commerce, it's got whatever you want. It's got Twitter um, integration in it, because that's everybody loves Twitter. Or you can hire a developer to write a custom one, or you can learn how to write your own custom modules. It's got fully fleshed APIs to do to, to plug into every single piece of the Drupal framework. So if you want to modify the way your users interact with the site, you can do that. If you want to modify the way the logging process happens, you can do that. If you, any, literally any spot that you can think to step into the Drupal code and its processes, you can do that with a custom module. And I sat here when I was putting together this presentation thinking about themes and what I should say about themes. And themes really are a very in-depth discussion. And uh, we're going to have a lot of these meetings. And I'm sure we'll have six or seven of them that are just on themes. And we still won't cover everything. Um, but so what I'll say about themes is that, uh, what will I say about themes? <laughs> um, oh, I'll say that for themes, there are lots of different templating uh, engines available for them. So they, it prefers PHP templates, and that's what um, the majority of the themes that ship with Drupal are uh, written in, which is just a templating language based in PHP. Clever name. And, um, but there's, there's a ton of different other ones in there. Uh, I don't know any of the names offhand because uh, PHP template's the only one I've ever used, and it's been perfectly robust and powerful enough for me, um, so I haven't had any reason to try anything else. And um, total customization. You can, I'll show you some examples later, but you can make Drupal look like whatever you want it to look like, literally. I mean, there's, there's no limit to what you can make it look like. Um, so if you put all that together, you get Drupal. And as you can see, it's not very complicated. There's three main elements. There's the core, the modules, and the themes. And on top of after that, you've got a fully customizable, totally powerful, content-driven, user-driven, web 2.0 site that's custom. It does whatever you need it to do. And it's three pieces. It's really simple. And you can do all of this without ever touching code, without knowing how to program, without it ever hiring a developer. You literally just download and upload files to your server, run the install scripts, and it works. It's uh, pretty amazing. Amazing stuff. Excuse me. Go ahead. And so here's some examples, and I'm going to show my favorite one, which is the Google Custom Site, <laughs> which we just launched on March 1st. If you have a chance, you should go check it out, because it's really, really slick and awesome. Um, <laughs> and uh, this, when I found this out, I was pretty impressed by it. This is pretty cool. So Sony Music decided that they were going to put all of their artist websites going forward in Drupal. And as you can see by the ones that I'm going to show up here, you've got Pink, Britney Spears, and I'm not plugging the music, by the way, just so you know. But if you can see, they're all really, really <laughs> different websites. And the design of them is, it's, they're all different. I mean, look, at these websites look nothing alike. So you can customize the content, you can customize the presentation. It's really, really powerful with what you can do with it. And then another example, the New York Observer. A very heavy content-driven site with a lot of traffic, a lot of users, a lot of articles going up to it, and a lot of comments. They chose Drupal to manage their content. So some resources for you. <clears throat> Websites are the Drupal website, we've got which is Drupal.org, um, the TDAC website, which we've got a, oh I'm sorry, I skipped. The Tucson and Southern Arizona Drupal Users Group, um, which is what we are looking to start tonight. And uh, well I guess it started already, but we're looking to add a lot of members and get uh, some interest driven into Drupal tonight. And then on the TDAC website we have a Drupal Users Group. Uh, registered with them. There's seven or eight members, and hopefully after tonight you guys will all join and be members. <laughs> um, books. I cannot preach this book.